These are our printers. Uh, Polyprinter is a company out of Dallas, and uh, you see that they're Cartesian printers. They go X and Y and the Z, and then you have a, the, the green bed, that's the print surface, uh, that heats up, and the plastic is extruded down onto it and then built up. So you can look around that printer and you can see that it's fully encased so we can, can control the inner environment and that temperature and make sure that there's no shocks to our model as it's printing. So the key with plastic, with printing with plastic, is um, you want it to cool off slowly. So you're heating it up uh, for ABS, we're heating it up to 270 degrees Celsius and uh, we want it to um, cool down slowly so that way there's no shock to it. So it's a little bit like uh, when you have glass or something and you take it from really really hot to really really cold and it'll snap and the same temp in the same way uh, plastic kind of works in a similar fashion in this case um, it can shrink as it cools it's very slight but if you're layering things down and you get a blast of cold air hitting it it can separate those layers and pull itself apart so with lower temperature plastics it's not as pr a big a problem with PLA something like that but with ABS it's much more susceptible to those things so that kind of enclosed um, printer can really help with that uh, you see a lot of the pieces on there are blue or yellow or some of the black pieces a lot of that is 3d printed so uh, and not printed at the highest infill rate so you go online you see a lot of people uh, advertise for or a lot of people you go online and you see a lot of people recommend uh, that you do 100 percent infill for everything and that's not really necessary a lot of the parts that we use are 20 to 25 percent infill um, that seems to be reasonable, and they and they when they wear out, they wear out. It's it's not a very common um, thing, frankly, for as much as they're used. So this is a little bit more about our poly printers. Uh, you see what our nozzle temperatures are at, and what our bed temperatures are at. And then you see the models that we print have a limit as far as how big our printers can print, about 220 by 220 in each direction, and then uh, we have one that's longer uh, in one direction, so about 490 millimeters. What can you make in the makerspace? Pretty much anything. Uh, we still follow the student code of conduct, so no weapons, no trademarked objects, uh, things like that. So um, we keep it pretty simple. So to give you kind of an overview, overarching idea of what happens, uh, you are designing something in some sort of CAD program, computer-aided drafting program, and that could be specific to your field. It could be interior design, fashion design, it could be uh, mechanical engineering, any sort of thing. Um, and then you export that as an STL file, which is this kind of universal PDF-style file um, for 3D models. So the STL file is like the PDF of 3D stuff. So it basically takes the model out of your CAD uh, program and describes the outside into triangles or polygons in this sense. And so that can be read by basically anything uh, that can read that math and more, more things read that. So then that gets thrown into our slicing and printing software where we decide what that bread looks like. How thick is the outside? What does the infill look like? Uh, what do you need it for? How many layers? And then do you need support material? Things like that. And that gets translated into a G-code file or a text file uh, that is in machine language. It tells the, the printer, go this fast uh, along these coordinates, along this path, uh, heat it up to this temperature, uh, pause here, pause there. All of those sorts of things are determined there. And that's read by our printers, and then you get your printer object, your printed object. So what does STL stand for? Surface Tessellation Language File. Uh, it comes out of stereolithography, which is you know, things rising out of the goo, basically, that, uh, that resin-style printing uh, that was a little bit more popular in the 80s. Um, and then, uh, but now it's primarily uh, related to just systems of triangles, you know, surface tessellation, basically. Um, if you find something online that you don't recognize, uh, a good place to go is fileinfo.com and see if you can uh, find out who made it and in what program will open it, and then you can export that file as an STL file that you could use. That can be very helpful. And now we'll go to Thingiverse. So there's a million different programs out there. Um, a million, now there's a million different, uh, so there's a million different uh, th and now we'll go to Thingiverse. So Thingiverse is one of a million different depositories out there. So there's, everyone is sharing their uh, models that they've made. And this is one of the more popular ones. There's, uh, there's others that are, that are just as good. Um, a lot of, some of them that you'll, you'll run across, some things will be free, some things won't. Thingiverse, generally most things are free if they're available for download. So uh, let's go ahead and go to that.